Hello. I would say good morning, but I don't really know what time of day it will be when you watch this. This is Miss Sharon, as you can probably tell. And Mr. Raymond and I are here to record some videos. You probably remember that during the Advent season, we usually do the children's church and we go through a variety of stories about what happens, what is described in both Matthew and in Luke. Well, this year we're not having children's church, as you know. We're not having a lot of church in person. So we're going to record these, uh, these lessons. We have been requested by, some people have requested that we do this. So here we are. So we'll see how it goes. Of course, we know that we are in the Advent season. We just had Christ the King Sunday, and now we have these four Sundays of Advent before it becomes Christmas Day. So let's see. What happened during this time? Why don't we start our story with Mary? Mary, we find this part of the story in the book of Matthew. Now, many of you have been studying Matthew in Sunday school for quite a while. Mary was probably at her house having a good day. That part's not really in the Bible, but she's probably decided, I think I'll go outside. We don't really know whether she's inside or outside, but we will just walk her outside to the well. And there she is, just thinking about things, thinking about how soon, perhaps, that she's going to marry Joseph and how nice that will be. But while she's involved in all of her thoughts of whatever she may be doing, an angel appeared. And the angel said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And Mary said, What kind of a greeting is this? She was very troubled and felt somewhat afraid. And the angel said, Do not be afraid, Mary. God has chosen you to be the mother of his son, and you will become pregnant, and you will have a baby that will be the son of the Most High God. And Mary says to the angel, How can this be? I'm not married. I can't have a baby right now. And the angel said, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and you will conceive and have a baby boy, and he will be called the Son of God. And Mary said, I will do whatever it is the Lord wants me to do. I am the handmaiden of the Lord. And then the angel left. But Joseph lived not too far away. And he went to see Mary. After all, they were engaged to be married. And she said, Joseph! You won't believe what happened. An angel came and told me that I was going to have a baby that was going to be the Son of God. Isn't that exciting? Uh, what do you mean? I don't believe that. Um, you're supposed to have my baby and... Okay, well, I, I'll, I, I'll leave. And Joseph went away very distressed. And I'm sure Mary was very sad because Joseph didn't believe her. Well, that night... Joseph went to bed and was sleeping in his bed, and while he was sleeping, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph. And the angel said, Joseph, son of David, what Mary said was true. She is going to have a child, and you should be taking care of her, and you, the baby will be born, and you should name the baby Jesus. Angel went away, and Joseph woke up. <gasps> it was true. What Mary said was true. So he goes back to see Mary and says, Oh, Mary, I'm so sorry. I saw an angel. He said, We should have a son and name him Jesus. Oh, Joseph. So Joseph and Mary were there in Nazareth. We assume they went through their wedding ceremony. We don't really know. But then, while they were there, Mary was pregnant, getting close to the time for the baby to be born, when, coming riding through all the cities and towns around, was a Roman soldier saying, A decree has gone out from Caesar Augustus. Everybody needs to be taxed. Everybody needs to be counted. We need to know how many people there are in the empire. Everybody has to go back to the town where they were born to be registered. Oh, oh, but sir... We can't do that. My wife is pregnant. She's about to have a baby. That is not a concern of mine. That is the law. That's what you must do. And the Roman soldier 
rode on away. Oh, Joseph, what will we do? Well, we will obey the law, and we will go to Bethlehem and register as we have been told to do. All right, let's get ready and go. So we don't know what they did to get ready, but we know that they did go to Bethlehem. Now, in all the stories that we read, they had a donkey that went with them. But we don't really, nothing in the Bible talks about them having a donkey, but we will just have a donkey go along with them too. And it was 90 miles to Bethlehem. So they're walking, and Mary is pregnant. So they certainly could not make it in one day. So there were probably lots of people walking along with them, and they would walk. Oh, I'm so tired. They'd rest a little bit. Oh, Joseph, I'm so tired. And then the next morning they would get up and probably eat something, maybe fix some breakfast over a fire. We don't know. And then they would walk on some more. And then again, they would rest. And then we don't really know how long it took, but eventually, eventually, oh, look, there's Bethlehem. Can you see it there in the distance, Joseph? Oh, yes, Mary, I see. There is Bethlehem. Oh, we are almost there. Oh, I'm looking so forward to going to the inn and relaxing and having a bed to sleep on. Oh, yes, that will be so nice. Let's go on. Oh, look how busy and crowded Bethlehem is. Oh, yes, it is. Lots of people are coming here. You know, the census applies to everyone, so lots of people had to come back to Bethlehem. It looks like it's really full. Look at all the merchants, people selling things, lots of things going on here. Oh, go see if you can get us a room. Yes, I see the inn over there. Oh, I will go over and get us a room. Soon we'll have a nice bed where we can rest. So Joseph went over to the inn. Hello, kind sir. Are you the innkeeper? Yes, I am. See, I've got my light here. It's getting a little late, so I have to hold my light out here. Yes, yes. I, would you, is there any chance that we could get a room? We really need a room for the night. My wife is about to have a baby, and I really need to get her inside where she can be more comfortable. I'm sorry. With so many people in town, we have no room at all. No room. You can try some other inns if you want, but I think they're all full. Oh, what am I going to do? Let me go talk to Mary. Mary, they say they're all full. I don't know what we can do. We may have to spend the night outside. Oh, Joseph, I'm so tired. You don't have anywhere where we can stay? Well, I do have a stable out back. Would you like to go there? You could go stay in the stable. It does have some clean hay. It's not a very good place to have your baby born, but I think it'll at least be dry and warm, and the animals are there to give you some warmth. Okay, thank you. I guess that's what we'll do. So Joseph went back and told Mary what they were going to do. And she said, okay, Joseph, that's all right. Let's go to the stable. And so they turned and they looked at the stable and they went over there. And that's where we're going to stop our story for today. We will record another one next week, and then the next week and the next week, until we finish the Christmas story. But we have not lit our Advent wreath. So today, what would the first candle be? We said the first candle would be hope. So let's light the candle of hope. We light the candle of hope, and we remember that Jesus is our hope. Jesus gives us hope. No matter what is happening, things look really sad for Mary and Joseph. Here they were, going to have to spend the night in the stable, but they were, Mary was the mother of God's son. So she certainly had hope, and Jesus being born certainly gives us hope. We're living in some trying times now, this pandemic, all this coronavirus, but we have hope. We know that God is with us, and no matter what, God loves us and God is with us. 
Now let's look at this Christmas tree here. Have you, do you have your Christmas tree up yet? We do not, but we probably will in a few days. Most of the time, Christmas trees are evergreen trees. They're green, they're trees that always stay green. They also point up to the heavens. We use evergreen trees because it reminds us that God is always with us and that we can have everlasting life because of Jesus. So always think of Jesus when you're decorating your Christmas tree. And I just have a few ornaments that we're going to put on today. Uh, what I wish is that you were here and I could give you ornaments to put on, but since you are not, I will do them for you. First, I'm going to read this one with the candle, because we know that candles have lots of meanings. Uh, they also remind us to let our light shine. So let's see what this particular ornament says. At Christmas time, many people decorate their houses and Christmas trees with lights. Do you do that? We do. As we celebrate this season, let those lights remind us that Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus came to earth to be our light so that we no longer have to live in the darkness of sin. What is sin? Sin are the things that we do that we should not. And Jesus wants his light to shine through our hearts and lives. This happens as we obey God's word, that's the Bible, share his love with family, friends, and neighbors, and tell others about Jesus, the light of the world. We know that Jesus is the light of the world, and Jesus tells us to let our light shine. We particularly want to remember that during the Advent season, that we want to be kind, we want to be helpers, we want to do whatever we can to be loving and kind to other people, and that will be letting our light shine. I'm going to hang several candles on the tree because we all want to be kind and patient and loving during this Advent season and let our light shine. And I also have this ornament. This is Mary talking to the angel when she said she would do whatever it was that God wanted her to do. So we will hang Mary on the tree today. Next week, we'll hang Joseph. But this week, we're going to hang Mary, and we're going to remember to let our light shine. And now, let's have a prayer. Dear God, we thank you for this Advent season that gives us hope, peace, joy, and love. Help us to be kind to other people. Help us to let our light shine throughout this Advent and Christmas season. Thank you for sending Jesus to be our Savior. Thank you for loving us. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Goodbye, and I hope we'll see you next week for our second Advent lesson.